So let's say you've just put on a beautiful couple coats of gel polish and you want to get your two weeks out of it. But then you experience chipping, peeling, wrinkling. What happened? I'm going to troubleshoot that with you so it doesn't happen again. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Susie. I've had the pleasure to work with some excellent brands. They put out product, they've researched it, they've tested it, they know how it works, but it's really important for us to follow the instructions. Number one thing in our industry, unfortunately, is allergies. Everybody's touching product. And when product is not cured, we're filing it, it's getting on our hands, it's just a lot of uncured product. So that's what I want to talk to you about right now. Gloves. We're all used to getting gloves on right now, right? Now I have noticed, and it's easy to do. We all want to do it. We polish some nails. Let me just get a color. Let me get me, look at my glasses. Look at me, did you see my glasses, cameraman? Oh, those are really cute, yeah. Aren't they adorable? Like I can't see long distance, but no. I can really see up close now. So. I've got this beautiful color, Kira Sky. It's called Dreamcatcher. Adorable. And again, I love all these products. That's why they're here. And I'm going to show you what can happen. Even though you have great products, you still have to work it properly. So when you're applying your product, I often will see people touching product to the bare skin. Now you could be doing this day after day, week after week, month after month, and never have an allergy. And then one day your skin could completely react and they will do this. Imagine if I wasn't wearing a glove. So now I've got it on my finger. It's tempting to do, I get it. <laughs> Our nails are tools, you know, you're not supposed to use your nails as tools, but we do. Or you can get a cuticle stick, that's what I would do. I'll put this aside so it doesn't get on my towel, but look at it on my finger. So when I polish, if I hit the cuticle like that, just get a cuticle stick and take it away. So wearing a glove helps that if you're going to go like this, it's going to get on the glove, not on your skin. If it gets on your skin, wipe it away right away with alcohol. Now for years, I will say that we didn't have all this information that we have now that we're passing on to you guys, which is be careful about allergies. But for years, I would literally be working with my product and applying my product and I would hit my finger sometimes and I would end up with literally a layer of acrylic at the end of the day and I used to peel it off like this. So years after years after years of doing that, I'm so lucky that I didn't actually develop an allergy to any of these products. Now acrylic and gel are basically the same thing chemically. They're just a little bit different, like ice and water, you might say. So constant contact with uncured product can cause allergies and we are on the increase and I think it might have something to do with too of seeing other nail technicians wiping it away with their finger like that and we don't want to do that on a regular basis because if you come up with an allergy there's nothing you can do you are now allergic to whatever that chemical is in that product. And it could be the same ingredient that's in acrylic and you could be allergic to that as well. So you really don't wanna go there because once you go there, you can't go back. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. So you wanna avoid any direct contact with uncured product, okay? If you do get some on your cuticle and you are using your finger, make sure it's the tip of your fingernail and not touching your skin. And then make sure you clean it up with alcohol right away. Wrinkling is a problem. That's confusing too, because you can put two coats on that you think are great, you've cured it, you've top coated it, you're now out and about, and you might notice in just a couple of hours, it didn't happen when you did it, but it starts to wrinkle. I'll put my glasses on for these. You don't really notice it at first, but if you take a good look, can you see how this is wrinkled? I'm gonna stick my thumb in it and show you how it's not cured and how it's wrinkled. Can you see that? I can't. Right up in here. Oh, just barely. And I got a 4K monitor, so it may be tough on a small phone to even anybody notice that, but we'll see. You guys let us know in the comments. So what's happening is I can see it with the naked eye. Well, my glass is naked eye. Very clearly. And it's just a little bit of a wrinkle, but it's just enough that you or your client will not like that. Now, it wasn't there when the client left. So now you're confused. 
They phone you up and say, oh, my nails are kind of wrinkling. They got a little bump in it. And you're like, I'm sure that when I did it, it was perfect. What's happening? It's too thick. Maybe it pooled when it was sitting in the machine, usually the thumb. That's a very common problem. We get a little bit too much on the thumb. Actually, it pools. So that's why I always say do the thumbs last. You do these fingers, you do the thumb, and when the thumb goes in the machine, even if it's just a little bit thicker, it'll fall because of gravity and it will pool on that one side and it'll cause this slight wrinkle. Now, I have one that I did before. I thought it was too much, but maybe for the camera, I need to show you this. Oh yeah, I can see that. Big see, time. this one is hugely wrinkled, but I wasn't going to use it because I thought it would be too much and like too exaggerated. But I think we need to see this one to really show you what I mean. So you can see how easily, look at it, it's, it's pliable, it's gummy, it's moving. That is all uncured gel. Look at that. And you can even see the wetness of the gel underneath, right? Look at that. You can see it's just totally, totally wet. And I'm just sort of pulling it back to show you. So this is gel that never got a chance to cure because it's just too thick. What's too thick? I mean, it's so tough because when you're applying it, it's feeling like it's going on good. And you've got to put it on a certain amount to be able to cover and give you that color you're looking for. But you're better off to go with three thinner coats, curing in between, than two thicker coats. That'll be way better. You'll be way, way happier. Now, what happens when you do get that? Now, what do you do? You got this little bit of wrinkle here, but the client doesn't want that and you don't want that. And it could wrinkle even more. In another couple of hours, that could be more wrinkled because it's still trying to cure in any type of UV that it's even getting when you go out for groceries. So unfortunately, what you have to do is you have to literally file that right off. And you can see it has hard edges to it, right? So you pretty much have to take it off. Sometimes you'll take it off and it might leave little bits on it, but you can get them smooth enough that it's okay. You can apply another coat on, you'll cover it up. But for the most part, it's got to come off because it's uncured product. And that's not what you want. That's one thing I like about gel polish, it self levels. Now nail polish, you get a few strokes on there, but if you do too many, it starts to dry on you. Gel polish will not dry on you until you put it under the lamp. So take advantage of the self-leveling. Let the self-leveling work for you. What I mean is this. So I'm going to polish this guy. Now I might kind of put this on here and I'm like, oh, I need a little bit more here. And I'll put a little bit over here and a little bit here. You can sort of patch it up a little bit, you know, and you can even, you can even, I'm going to steal a little bit of product. And if you feel you didn't get close enough, like say over here, you can literally add this like this in there like that. You see what's happening? It's starting to self level and blend into the previous stuff. Now that's just the first coat. So it's gonna be a little bit wonky, but the second coat will give you that true color, right? A little bit, the mist part over here, you just go like that, you can fill it in. That's what I love about gel, it self levels. Now when you're polishing your own nails, I'll show you another thing you can do. This is much harder to do with nail polish, but gel polish, you can do this. That's what I love about gel polish. You can literally go sideways See how I can get the edge of that right over there like that? And then you can switch your angle and your brush and then you can go down the side, right? Oh, we should have picked a darker color so you can see it better. But you can angle it, you can come in, you can angle it totally and go in it like this. You can do the end like this. You can't do them with so much with nail polish because it's actually kind of drying, but you can play a lot with this stuff. You kind of just, See how it's kind of streaky like that? See how it's changing? It's starting to soften together, move together, and it's starting to self-level. So by the time you put that under the machine, it'll be quite smooth. Look at that, that's ready to be nuked. Perfect. So you've got your nails on for let's say seven days, and now it's chipping 
before it's peeling. Oh, so frustrating. You did all that work and you cured it and you've organized your outfits and everything to go with it. And it's starting to chip and peel. Well, you just had a nice fresh manicure and you don't want that. So why is that happening? Well, it's a several reasons why it might be happening. One of them is, is that it wasn't prepped properly enough so the gel wasn't able to grab onto it. So when you're prepping, you need a file. Now, if I use, let me see, I, this is my file kit here. I have five files in there. But if I use, let me see, the Smooth and Shine, or if I even used my Fine, it's about a 240 grit. Great file, but not great for prepping for gel. So if I file my nail, or if I use the Smooth and Shine, and then I paint the gel on top, when it's curing under the light, it's not really grabbing on to the nail plate or the base coat, right? So unfortunately, it might chip or might peel. Another reason why it might chip or peel is because you didn't use a base coat. When you're using natural nails, you wanna use a base coat, okay? Another reason is you might've had some oils on there, it's not completely cleaned off. That could be another reason. Also too, if you're cleaning with alcohol, good. If you're cleaning with acetone, not so good because acetone can smooth it out again even if you've roughed it back up again to actually grab onto that gel polish. And another reason might be product incompatibility. And that brings me to my last point, which is mixing brands. If you mix brands, lots of people do it all the time. And you may find success. But if you're finding that there's a dulling, there's a voiding, there's peeling, it's maybe because the brands that you have mixed are not jiving together. For better chance of mixing brands and actually making it work, I would suggest when you put, let's say the color and you just can't find the top coat to match it, put the two coats of color on, but take off that dispersion layer and then put your top coat on because then you have the top coat adhering to a layer that's been removed of the gel that's on there so they won't kind of fight against each other and you are just adhering it to a rougher surface. So remove that dispersion layer and then give it a good buff with possibly a file more like this, like a sanding sponge of about a 180. That would be good. And you buff that up. Then you can put the top coat on that might not match the brand and you'll probably have a lot more success that way. Okay, so those are five problems you can have when you're putting on gel polish. It's a beautiful look but it can be frustrating when it doesn't work. But it's just in the details and how you're using the product might be causing any one of those problems that we talked about. I hope that helps you put your gel polish on and have beautiful two weeks out of it. Thanks for joining me, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.